Welcome to another flip video lesson with Mr. Volkman. Today's flip video lesson is going to look at more differences between the Neolithic Age and the Paleolithic Age. And this is for chapters 3.3 through 3.7. Remember, this video is meant for educational purposes. So if at any time there is something you don't understand, please make sure you pause the video and rewatch it. Let's begin, shall we? First, I want to talk about one of the most important things about the Neolithic age, and that's food supply. You see, during the ne Neolithic age, there was a stable food supply. As I talked about in a previous flip video, the people in this age, the New Stone Age, did not have to go all over the place doo -doo 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 -doo, looking for food. You see, the Neolithic age was able to harness the power of agriculture. They were able to domesticate animals. They were able to grow crops. Now when you domesticate an animal, you keep it close to you, you're able to breed it to create younger of those type of animals instead of having to chase the wild ones that for some reason don't want to be by you. Because of the stable food supply, the Neolithic Age was able to change in ways that the Paleolithic Age was not able to. For example, the Paleolithic Age were nomads and they used temporary shelters. Shelters that could be taken down and moved very easily. The Neolithic Age, because they had the stable food supply, were able to settle themselves. They're able to have permanent shelters. A lot of the times then they started settling around their farms because doesn't that make sense to live by where you work? instead of having to drive, you know, 45 minutes. Not that they had cars back then. Now, as you can see, this picture here shows a great illustration of a permanent village. You're not gonna be moving this anytime soon. Now, I want you to realize that it would have taken many years for the people of the Paleo Paleolithic age to come up with shelters that look like this. You know, it's trial and error. You don't figure out a perfect solution right away a lot of the times. Now, towns and villages were also good to be efficient in splitting up work and duties. As this picture right here shows, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see. We have a number of people doing various jobs. We have a guy here plowing a field, a gentleman here harvesting crops, we have people carrying water here. Looks like this guy's pulling a wagon with horses. This guy's doing something in a hut. She's carrying something. These guys are doing something over here. You have lots of people doing a lot of different things, which is way more efficient because you don't have this guy plowing the field and then climbing the tree and then getting water. And by the time the day's done, that's all he's done is work. Because we have people doing a variety of different things, it gives you time to do actions that aren't work related. Now the city of, or the village town of Jericho is a great example of a group of a, of a community coming together. And here's some examples of what um, Jericho and, and Katahayuk, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, would look like you know now as many, many years have gone by. I mentioned different jobs. Now in the Paleolithic age, they focused on survival. I mean, food, that was survival. And that's what they focused on, you know, chasing food, scavenging food. But in the Neolithic age, their focus for jobs was making themselves and their surroundings better, and you could say more beautiful. And cattle hayuk is a great example of that. Farmers, for example, and you'll read more about this in the textbook, were able to create through various trial and error processes, 14 different types of crops for food. Now, if you're busy trying to survive, you're not gonna have the time to do that. They're able to create more comfortable clothing. You know, who wants to wear uh, itchy hair all the time, right? Yeah, you want something that feels soft and luscious on your skin. They mined flint to make sharper tools. So again, you don't have time to do things like this when you're constantly chasing your food. Doot, 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 doot. And also when you have one person doing like 10 jobs. 
when you have a permanent shelter and your food's right outside your house and you have lots of people to do many jobs, you have time to do all these extra items to create a better life for yourself. The other action that occurs when you have time is trade. The Paleolithic age, the resources that they looked for were in their immediate area. Because again, you don't have time. The Neolithic age though, another change, is that they're able to trade for resources that weren't in their area. So if I'm looking for, I don't know, flint, and there's no flint in my area, I'm able to trade, maybe meet at a, a common area with someone from another town many miles away who they have flint. And maybe they don't have a lot of rivers, so they don't have a variety of fish. So I'm able to give them fish in exchange for their flint. You know, we're all happy. The other big bonus with trade is now seen in the fact that since you have more time to work on different crafts, I'm getting better at making things, which means I might need different material, such as flint. Maybe there's certain precious gems or stones, wait for that bell, that I can put into my work, into my crafts, to make it look nicer, but they're not in my area. So I can train, trade different kind of crop seeds to get these items. Well, thank you for watching this flip video. I tried finding a Neolithic person to come talk about their life, but for some darn reason, I wasn't able to find anyone. Don't forget to go to Edmodo to check for the flipped assessment. And you know what? I'll see you in class tomorrow. Mr. Volkman! Mr. Volkman! Mr. Mr. Vol ah! I found a Neolithic man! You could have you could have talked about this. Oh. Wow, I wish Mr. Volkman would have asked for my help earlier. <laughs>